Hey there, fellas. Welcome back to another episode of the Wolf and Iron Podcast. You're listening to a Truck Talk Thursday. If you're tuning in for the first time, this is uh, an appropriately named portion of the Wolf and Iron Podcast where I'm in my truck and I'm talking to you guys about whatever things are on my mind, some manly things. And today I want to talk about barefoot running, which I've been a fan of now for the last two years or so. And I kind of want to give you guys a little bit of lowdown about why I think you should take it up, the benefits of it. Um, you know, one of the things that's interesting is that I'll post every once in a while on Facebook or Instagram that I was going out for a barefoot run. And sometimes guys will actually post, like, I can't stand the idea of letting my feet touch the grass, which, you know, like it freaks them out. It's kind of like an icky thing, right? And I can't get my mind around it. I'm like, why not? Like, that's grass feels great. It's like, a, you know, it's like carpet, but better. But I get it. It's, it's tough for some guys to kind of get their mind around. But I want to talk about why it's important. So, you know, our feet are meant to splay out, to have more room, more more places to go. And unfortunately, most of us, the vast majority of the modern Americans, for sure, but modern people in general, um, we tape our feet up or we put them in these sort of casts we call shoes that are really more fashion devices than they are for support and running and all the other kind of things that they talk about. The reason I got into barefoot running was that I had, I, I grew up in the country, so I spent a lot of time barefoot. And I, um, I, I mean, I still wore shoes. I wasn't a total hick. But I, I spent a lot of time barefoot running around. And as I got to be an adult, you know, I started wearing boots and going through the military and all sort of kind of stuff. I was told early on when I was about uh, 17 or so that I had flat feet and I was trying to go into the Air Force. That didn't work out because apparently they don't like people with flat feet. They told me to go next door to the Navy office, which I did, and uh, and promptly was admitted into the military. Anyhow, but I, I began to have issues with my feet, uh, particularly my left foot, about four f- or five years ago, and uh, actually maybe longer than that now. And I, I, I developed plantar fasciitis in it. I had um, I'd rolled my ankle a number of times going on trail runs and stuff like that. I just had all kinds of issues with it. Now, all throughout the military, I I would run. I was never very fast. I did um, I did you know some five Ks before I started having really you know serious issues. But every time I would run, it didn't really matter at the beginning of my uh, running career or whatever. My feet and my legs would just feel beat up, beat up. And a lot of the guys that I knew that would you know go for a run, they were they were totally fine, right? So I'm not saying this is everybody's issue. This is just my issue. A lot of guys would go out and they'd go for a run on Monday and they were ready to go for a run on Tuesday and they were ready to go for a run on Wednesday and they were just picking up the miles and acting like it was no big deal. Now, of course, a lot of these guys down the road would develop something, runner's knee, uh, jumper's knee, um, you know, tennis knee, if that's the thing. Uh, they would develop plantar fasciitis, which I think a lot of guys go through. But it just really began to take a toll on me. I, I wasn't able to work out with the guys at F3 because every time I'd go work out with these guys, um, it would just flare up again and uh, eventually just had to take some time off and I began doing some research on it and I, I began to realize that my feet were just really weak. I mean, at the end of the day, what it comes down to is my feet were just weak and they couldn't handle all of the stress of running, at least not in the shoes that I was in. Now, over the years I had done orthotics, custom orthotics, uh, spent a good bit of money on rehab. Uh, of my feet, I'd gone had had my fascia kind of like uh, massaged, all kinds of things done to it. I had gone from like a minimalist uh, issue to a the Brooks Beast, which is this hyper control monster of a of a shoe where you basically all you can do is just clod the earth, uh, you know, step after step, and uh, but your feet won't won't roll side to side. I was told that I overpronated and underpronated, and I had all these issues. I was told by some people I had flat feet. I was told by other people I didn't have flat feet and everything was fine. But at the end of the day, my feet were just weak. You know, they'd been in a cast for way too long and uh, it just wasn't good for them. So I started going barefoot. This primarily started when I was when I quit my job at uh, well Cardinal Solutions. I was a software developer before I went full-time as an entrepreneur. But this allowed me basically to just go barefoot as much as possible. And, and the guys early on for Rustic and Maine, our other business, they, um, you know, they would see me in the shop going barefoot all the time. I was barefoot as much as possible. And I began doing some barefoot running outside. Now, 
anybody will tell you if you start barefoot running start slow which I did uh, even though I'd been walking barefoot and, and, and had probably about a year's worth of barefootedness or ish uh, very very minimalistic kind of shoes uh, under my belt I still started off slow with barefoot running and we've got a, a nature preserve around us it's got mowed grass and, and some trails most of it is has grass where we run or where I run so it was great to get out there and just get started guys it is a night and day difference running on grass or running on dirt than it is running on asphalt in shoes night and day and I don't care if you got great shoes I don't care if they're like it's like running on clouds eventually those shoes are gonna wear down just the feeling that you get is totally different when your feet hit the ground and your toes splay out and you get to feel all the things going on underneath you and you get to react you know immediately to whatever the terrain is there's just so much more happening and your feet become so much more stronger now it does take time for the bottom of your soles to kind of build up and, and kind of get uh, tougher you might get some blisters uh, watch out for things like acorns and you know whatnot sticks and things of that nature but slow down if you got to slow down speed up when you can speed up but guys it is a totally different experience so when I first started barefoot running I'll kind of tell you guys a couple of interesting things when I first started I, I would have my headphones in because I'm listening to music and man when I when my feet would hit the ground I could hear the thump in my ear because it had they were plugged up with headphones and it was like thud 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 by the time I got on my about the you know the the next half mile it had softened up by the time I got down to you know that first mile had passed it had gotten much softer but I wasn't aware of just how uh, I don't know how tight everything was with my legs and my feet and just how how they just hit the ground with just such a you know a thud like that even with shoes on it would have been bad right shoes give you that that cushion so you can kind of roll into and kind of do a little bit more of a heel strike if that's your running style and then of course people talk about midfoot forefoot you know striking which one's right and, and then they people just toss it up and say well it's really whatever works for you um, but you can do heel strikes in shoes without much of an effort you can't really do that barefoot running so you're going to do a midfoot or forefoot strike and uh, it, but you kind of learn that you begin to kind of feel that and you get that feedback from your body like this is not okay like I can't continue running like this otherwise I'm going to just jar my bones and this is going to be awful the other thing that I noticed after going for a run and remember I'd been running for years I'd, I think I'd done up to 10 miles at one point um, trying to get ready for a half marathon before I just said screw it this is taking too much of my time in my life and then again having issues but the uh, the thing with barefoot running I noticed was that my the bottom of my feet were a little tender but my actual feet my ankles and my legs weren't sore they were always sore after I ran before and so guys let me just say this if you're having issues with your feet if you're having issues with your ankles with your knees da 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 go down the line I know it may seem like total hippie stuff it may seem really strange but there's a really good chance that you're just weak now look I don't have a runner's body I am not if nobody would look at me and go that guy's a runner I'm I got skinny legs I'm big up top not in a good way like not in a fat way but just I'm, I'm hef heftier up top uh, it's like nature just forgot to stop you know keep building uh, downstairs or something like that not not in every way just so you understand you know just my legs that's what I'm talking about but anyhow I got skinny legs I'm, I'm heavier up top the opposite of what you see you know most runners most runners are either very lean or they've got thicker legs than they do up top the point is if I can do it you can do it this is not I'm not saying this because I'm built to be a runner uh, I'm saying this because that if you guys are having issues with plantar fasciitis I'm not saying look don't don't wait for your plantar fasciitis to get fixed don't wait for it to get all solved go out and start barefoot running before it's solved before it's fixed you got issues with runner's knee and um, you know other ankle issues go out and start barefoot running before you try to you know maybe you can do it while you're getting rehab that's fine but don't wait for like all the stars to align and everything to start feeling right and then maybe you'll try it out one day uh, the thing is is that your body really needs that feedback that it's not getting through shoes uh, even if you're doing a zero drop which is much better meaning that your shoes don't have technically your shoe doesn't have a uh, there's not a pitch um, of elevation pitch from heel to toe or something like that 
but you're still elevated off the ground. So even if you're running in ultras, which great shoes, um, uh, you know, if you're running with those on the pavement, that's fine. Uh, maybe that works for you, but if you really want to strengthen your feet and you want to have that kind of natural feedback, if you guys just want to have a, a good two to three mile run or even longer where you walk away from that, just going, that felt good. Like I want to go do that tomorrow. That was awesome. Go out and uh, do some barefoot running. The last thing I'm going to say, and I've mentioned this app a few times on a couple of other podcast episodes, and then I'm going to go get some coffee. Uh, the last thing I'm going to say is that there is this app called Zombies Run, and I've mentioned it a couple times, like I said, because it is so much fun, especially if you're out running barefoot. I guess it could be a lot of fun, too, if you're running in the dark. But basically, the app is like an old radio drama. You can think about it like that. And it's it's basically just telling you stories. You're kind of you're you're a runner as part of a colony of survivors from the zombie apocalypse. And you know, of course, you got to outrun zombies. You got to go collect supplies. And there's an overarching story that you're a part of. It's a lot of fun. And so, if you're having just you know you're bored with the running routine that you've been in, and you like a good story, go check it out. I don't know if this company does other stories. I know this has been a big hit for them. And, uh, but there are other, there are other stories that you can listen to while you're running that aren't necessarily, they don't have anything to do with running, but it's just kind of like a radio drama type of things that are very, uh, get you very involved in it, right? You're not necessarily a character in their story, but there are other things like that you can download on Audible or whatever. But Zombies Run, it's an app. Go download it, check it out. You're going to have a lot of fun. And, uh, uh, it just kind of gets you kind of excited. I want to hear the next chapter. I want to hear the next thing. And as silly as it may sound, it's just, uh, it's, it's awesome. Plus they got an online community. that's a lot of fun as well. So there's a little pitch for those guys. Go out and do some barefoot running. Let me know how it goes. If you are a barefoot runner or if you've tried it out, um, head over to our Wolf and Iron Facebook group. Cause I want to hear about your experience and you can go to wolfandiron.com slash the group. That's wolfandiron.com slash the group and jump in there and let us know where you run. Maybe post some pics, talk about what your experience has been. Um, you know, I think this is a, this is a movement that's coming back, but I think it's got a lot of, of ways to go and, uh, shoes are starting to finally catch up to that. Um, our feet need a lot more room to move around than, than they've been given. And so any feedback, any thoughts you have on that as well. All right, guys, talk to you later.